Hello and welcome to Breakfast All Day. I'm Matt. Uh, that's Christy. That's Alonzo. Uh, we already did our news segment, but lo and behold, there is a movie called News of the World. Mm -hmm. uh, Alonzo, will you tell us about it? Certainly. So uh, Tom Hanks is reuniting with his uh, Captain Phillips director, Paul Greengrass. This time it's a Western. And uh, Tom Hanks plays a uh, Civil War veteran who is now making his way around, seems mostly Texas, as a guy who goes from town to town to read the news to people because, you know, there's no radio yet. There's no TV. There's barely newspapers that get outside of metropolitan areas. So he basically, people show up, they pay a dime, and he will read stories from the newspaper. And like many a newsman to follow in his wake, he knows how to grab their attention. He knows to, to end with a funny human interest story. He knows how to stoke people's outrage, but he also knows how to calm them down uh, when they are feeling upset about you know, natural disasters. In his travels, uh, he comes upon a, a lynched a black uh, Union sol U.S. soldier, um, and the girl that he was uh, accompanying, played by a German actress uh, Helena Zengel, uh, this is a girl who was the daughter of German settlers but was kidnapped at an early age by the Kiowa uh, tribe and has been raised there, does not speak English, does not speak German, and pretty much would like to get back to uh, what she thinks of as her family, uh, but they are all being herded off of their land by the U.S. Army, who wants to uh, take it for the next wave of settlers to come through. So uh, Tom Hanks is trying to get this girl to what's left of her her biological family, but bonding with her along the way, dealing with other issues, uh, and also facing up to his own past and his own uh, familial losses that have taken place in a this very devastating period of U.S. history. It's slow. It's a slow Paul Greengrass movie. It is, yeah. If, if, you, thought, <laughs> if you thought Paul Greengrass was going to change the Western, the Western has changed Paul Greengrass. It's really interesting, right? And in, in terms of its pacing and in terms of its imagery, there's like a lot of the big like John Ford mm. vistas and there's like the shooting from the inside of this, you know, brightness on the outside. Yeah. It's iconic imagery. It is, uh, it is slow to a fall. And I, I am interested in the idea that he after all this time with a very peculiar kind of aesthetic bent in like the Bourne movies that he's done or United 93 or even Captain Phillips I mean you know you associate a certain kind of energy to a Paul Greengrass film I think it's, it's interesting that he's trying something different but it's like like too different in the opposite <laughs> extreme and I found it really sluggish and dull like as earnest as the performances are and as lovely as the scenery is and as strong as the supporting cast is between like Elizabeth Marvel and Bill Camp and it's you know Helena Zengel is very good in this I just I just didn't care <laughs> I was never I was never sucked in there's a uh there's one scene, there's that one gunfight scene up in the hills. Yeah. That, that's pretty exciting, right? In the canyons um, outside Dallas. Right. Isn't that funny? Uh, <laughs> Rock wall. <laughs> I don't know. So one thing that is true to Paul Greengrass style, um, I don't know if the people or the company that owns Steadicam like made some kind of feud with the Greengrass family, but for whatever reason, yeah. I don't know why he insists on using handheld cameras whenever he gets the chance. I think this is a movie where that makes zero sense. Um, you know, like, I don't need to feel like I'm riding on the wagon. I don't, <laughs> like, I'd rather see what's going on, right? Don't you want to be on the wagon with Tom no. Hanks? Come on. <laughs> no, no, I'm I, off the wagon. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like there's like a handful of scenes where it's like, oh, this is a Paul Greengrass movie. Right. And, and I was fine with that. I, I agree with you, Christy. This is a slow film, but I never felt bored by it. I was really interested in these characters and their interaction. I kind of liked the sort of the scope of, of what's going on here. And I don't know, I, I found it really kind of interesting. I mean, somebody on Twitter today said that this is basically a better Ron Howard movie than the Ron Howard movie we got this year. And it's like, uh, okay, you know, fair enough. But I, I don't know, for me, it works. You know, there's, there's a, there's also a lot of things we've seen in other movies, right? Like, yeah, we've, you know, I, I couldn't help but think of Stands with a Fist from Dances with Wolves in the, yeah. you know, girl that was raised by Native Americans. Well, the Searchers, um, you know, Natalie right, the Whisker. Searchers. Yeah. Um, this, you know, this movie does very, very little to touch on, you know, 
the pushing of, of Native Americans off their land, coupled with the character of Captain uh, Kid was, which is also really Captain Kid. <laughs> I, like seriously. He's I, the captain now. Right, but I mean, Captain <laughs> Kid, like there's a whole other movie called Captain Kid from way, way back. Like, why would you need oh, that character? Wait till that? we talk about the Midnight Sky if you want to talk about movies right. that remind you of other movies. Mm -hmm. um, which we've already spoken about. Last week. Uh, did we? Was oh, last that week. was yes. us. That Get was us, Alonzo. Alonzo. I do four uh, podcasts, come on. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, there's a fair amount of the Odyssey in this, right? Like it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, traveling around and different little adventures and and... This is based on a novel, is, by the way. This, you know what this movie makes me think? This movie is the perfect mid-90s weekend ha. TNT movie. Like, this is the <laughs> kind of thing that would get played over and over and over on like TNT. Tombstone? <laughs> on, right. Or uh, um, another, uh, not a Tom Hanks movie. Um, I almost said another Tom Hanks movie. Uh, the one... Um, in prison, Morgan Freeman. Um, oh, Shawshank, Shawshank. Redemption. Shawshank. Right, like <laughs> this one, it goes along and it, this is a perfect, look, for the times we're in now, this is a perfect movie because you can't go anywhere, you're kind of stuck inside, might as well watch it, right? Like, and, and from that standpoint, like, it's great. Would I, you know, I'd be interested to see how this plays on the big screen because there are big sweeping vistas, but then some stuff like the, you know, there's that scene in the, in the dust storm where we see that, that, kind of caravan of Native Americans, that looked terrible. That looked really, mm. really, like that looked like something out of a video game. I thought the CGI in that was really awful. The wall of sand. Or or like as they're in it and he's looking around and then he mm. sees, you know, that other, that whole group of, of uh, Kiowa walking around. The other thing that, you know, and I know that this isn't really this story, but I'm kind of shocked that in this day and age, we're telling a story about a, civil war vet that's dealing with the aftermath and it touches so little on the fact that he was a confederate captain and fought mm -hmm. on the confederate side and we see this lynching you know we see the the aftermath of a lynching early on but this movie hardly deals with the idea of slavery and these guys fought well, for that like, at you, all. You, and I know that that's not this story, but you, you do get that whole, that, that the guy, you know, when he shows up where the rich guy sort of running everything and it's essentially like slavery is still happening. And he very kind of subtly is, you know, urging the people to revolt against this guy. I mean, yeah, they don't, right, but, he doesn't, he but, doesn't take personal account for him having been a confederate, but I think again, you're right. That's not the movie that they're, that's not the story. Right, but, but even then that movie, like, You've got all these black folks and white folks all working together in the same area that, you know, honestly, we talked about this. I mean, we didn't talk about this scene, you know, that scene with Jim Brown or with Aldous Hodge and Bo Bridges early on in One Night in Miami. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, a better yeah, job of showing, you know, what's still the racism that still rages in the country than yeah. this movie, I think, really ever does, right? I Arguably, it's not trying, yes. Yeah. It's but not I think trying I, to tell that story. I think that's what, yeah. I, I, here's the thing. I think this movie falls less in the category of other Paul Greengrass movies in terms of the sort of handheld documentary style, you know, kinetic editing. And more, I think there's a category of European filmmakers come to the United States and make a movie about the West, whether mm -hmm. it's a period Western or a contemporary film. And there's something about the space that just like flummoxes them. And I, I think these are, a lot of them are really good movies. Like you think about like Paris, Texas or um, Stroshek, or there's like, there's a whole genre I think of like European directors make a movie that is set like West of the Rockies and they're just like, you know. <laughs> uh, and I put that in the, the, this movie in that category. Now on that level, I found it interesting. And just, uh, I found Hanks's characterization really interesting. And the, the, the you know, Johanna Zengel um, is, you know, just like, an amazing actress. I'd never seen her before. Uh, Helen is Engel, sorry, Johanna's the character. Uh, you know, I do wish that the that the movie would let her have her way in terms of wanting to be called her Kiowa name and not her German name. But you know, I that is she's really intense, and I I, I liked her a lot. All right. So, what's your number then? Uh, I said eight. Well, you're very high compared to us. I'm saying 6.5, Matt. I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying six. You're saying six. All right, so 6.8 is our number. All right, well, y'all are wrong about promising a woman and you're wrong <laughs> about this. <story. laughs> 
<laughs> Lump of coal Damn for you, it. Alonzo. Lump of coal. <laughs> Anyway, this is going to be, again, this is a movie that is theatrical at first and then is streaming, correct? Right, but it's universal, so it'll be like right. a pretty short window after being at AMC and Regal Theaters for a Wait till weeks. it's on, just wait till it's on TNT every weekend for the next <laughs> three years. And then nap on the couch and... Exactly. Because you know, right, it's so episodic, you can come in and out of it whenever, it's fine. Oh, y'all. All right, fine. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on social media at BeFast All Day, and please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast All Day. Uh, lots of cool exclusive stuff there for our subscribers. If you already are a subscriber, thank you much. We always appreciate it. And it's really what kind of keeps this whole thing going. Uh, wishing everybody a really great holiday season. Stay safe, stay at home see your relatives next year uh but you know just take care of yourselves and each other and um happy new year we'll see you in 2021 thank you for sticking with us we'll see you in a couple of weeks bye bye, bye.